Hi everybody, it's Sue here. Are you ready to head into our second week of going through God's Word, learning about Deborah, the, just the very few chapters found at the beginning of the book of Judges in the Old Testament. Uh, we've got a huge response from the first week, and if you're just joining us now, uh, just jump right in. As you guys know, the current study, our Deborah anointing, which we're looking at with Michelle McLean Walters, and you can still get the book on Amazon or Christian Book Distributors if you haven't gotten it yet. It's a very tiny book. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, it's really, really short, so very, very readable and very underlinable, and I'm underlining almost everything. But this second week, so oh wait, let me go back. What we do is everything is in the announcements. That's where I was going. We'll find each of the current Bible study posts in the announcements. The current day's post is always pinned to the top. So right now, I'm recording this on Sunday for Monday night viewing. Um, Friday's post is still at the top, but later tonight, Sunday evening, I'm gonna post them for Monday, and that'll be pinned at the top. If you need to go scroll back down to get to prior lessons, then do that to catch up. Again, I always do a tiny excerpt from the book. That's all I can do. And I, so that's why I highly encourage you to get the book. But this week we're going to be, uh, we end up on Monday with the end of chapter one and we head into chapters two and three. And just a thing on chapter one, so Monday's post, is we're talking about the seasons of life. Now something Michelle doesn't bring out, but I think is very important is that I think we can cycle through the seasons. So um, there may be times where you go through all four seasons over a period of just a few years, and there may be a time where you cycle through them over a longer or extended time, or maybe even just make it shorter, a few months. The Lord is in control of the seasons, but we can hold up the seasons by, by resisting the Lord, by kind of doing our own thing or getting distracted, which I think is the biggest enemy of our age today is distraction. So our, all God ever asks of us is our yes. So say yes to him, let him have it, because the sooner that you do, the sooner that I do, we will be in the flow of where he wants us to be. And believe me, I can tell you from experience, this is the absolute truth. God is always ready on the spot to move us and position us, but it requires our yes. So that is how I want to look at the end of chapter one. And then on Tuesday and uh, Wednesday, we look at chapter two. And uh, Michelle really brings up that Deborah the honeybee, the warrior honeybee, um, really is one who inspires people as she is led by the Holy Spirit. God is raising up a generation of women from young to old. The, and by generation, I'm not saying, I'm making that a really broad spectrum there. The, if you're alive today, you're in that broad generation of what God is raising up in the world and in your home and in your county and in your province and in your state and in your nation. We need to lead by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I personally have been living in Ephesians 1 and Romans 8. Talks all about walking in the Spirit. Also, also Galatians 3 and Galatians 5. That just to let Him reign and rule. To really give up control of my day and my will and my plans. And certainly I have to-do lists, but I surrender them to Him every morning. You know, there's a great passage in Psalm 5. If you read it in the message or in the passage, uh, Passion Translation, when it goes back to the actual wording, it says, Lord, in the morning you'll hear my prayer. I will direct it to you and will you lead my day. But in the message, I love what it says, and it actually is very true to the original. It says, I lay out the pieces of my life on your altar, and I wait, Lord, for your fire to descend. And you know, that's been so important for me over the last year especially, you know, what an interesting year, to lay out my children, to lay on the altar my life, to lay on the altar my ministry, to lay on the altar my marriage, my husband, my uh, my grown kids, uh, my nation, you know, what, uh, what he has me doing. Lay it on the altar and then you back off and say, Lord, let your fire fall. Let your Holy Spirit fall and ignite what needs to live and, and burn away what needs to go away. And that's what uh, Michelle is really bringing out to us 
through chapter two is that we are to lead by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you from, again, years of experience, we can lead by the flesh, what we think is right, and really mess things up, or we can wait on the Lord and let him ignite our lives, let him fill us up with his gifts and fruit, and then see what he does. The difference is night and day. So if you've been struggling, if you've been frustrated, if you've been impatient, if you're wondering why your life is feeling a little stagnant and maybe going around the circle and circle and circle, let me just say, take a step back, lay it all on the altar, ask for Holy Spirit fire to come and he will and direct us. And then we head out the remainder of the week in chapter three. And she brings up the whole point out of one of the passages that Deborah says, I arose a mother in Israel. And she brings out, Michelle really uh, expands that for us, that today we need mothers. We need women with a mother's heart to nurture, to cultivate, to invest time, to take the time. Can I tell you, I'm still redoing some of the damage I did as a mom to my kids. I'm just being real, real here. And God has been speaking to me over the last 10, 15 years, and I've had a really major life trans transformation. My kids will tell you that. It wasn't that I was a tyrant, but I really didn't know how to nurture. I got to be honest. And God is just wooing my heart, needing my heart, and that's what he is doing in those modern day Debras. It's not just me, it's all of us. We can have a mother's heart whether we have children or not. It is our innate ability to nurture and to rise, raise people up, to take them to the next level of life. Um, but there's something again about when it's Holy Spirit anointed and Holy Spirit ignited and Holy Spirit led that is such so much more profound and efficient and powerful and brings transformation that gives God the glory alone. So this is where we're headed this week. This is a really, really short video, but I hope you're as excited as I am. And I'm gonna close in prayer and um, let's study God's word together as we look at the life of Deborah. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we commit this week to you that you will speak life words to us that will grab our attention, each one of us in our own way, that even we who feel like we never leave our homes or those of us that travel the world, wherever you have us in life, we are positioned to bring freedom, to pray prayers of freedom, to speak deliverance, to walk in the power of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I just pray, ignite each one of us to even more that we can reach our lost and dying world for you. I commit the women to you that watch Bible study and read Bible study this week, and may they just sense your presence in a profound way. Lord, come and bring the fire of your spirit upon our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys and have a great week.